My friends, <laughs> our second text for today is going to come from Exodus chapter 20. But this begins, if you will, a sermon series called The Gospel According to Johnny Cash. We started at 9 o'clock with Man in Black, and we will continue at this worshiping experience, and then there will be two different sermons on next week as well. And if you wanted to hear the first sermon from this morning, we will have it on our website within the next few days, and you'll be able to check that out. All right. Um, Exodus chapter 20. And actually, the bulletin has the fifth verse, verses 1 through 5. I actually want to read that sixth verse as well. Please listen and read along. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings and all that you have done and how you continue to be there for us through it all. And we thank you for what we've witnessed right now, Lord, for we know that you're using these things to prepare us to hear a word from you. So make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we want to walk out of here better than the way we walked in. Through Christ we ask it all. Amen. Amen. If you would please, turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Friend, Amen. today's sermon is, today's sermon is I, walk the line. I Walk the Line. Try to turn the tide 
because you're mine I walk the line It's interesting, there are two origins as to how this song came into being. One is that it was written by Johnny Cash for his first wife, Vivian, who was concerned about him being faithful while he was on the road, while he was off on tours. But the second is that Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash who loved gospel music, wanted to record a gospel song. His record label and management did not think that was a good idea. So they would not let him do it. But he wrote this song to express his faithfulness to God. And towards the end of his life, he was interviewed by a reporter for some big magazine, and he laughed when telling this individual about his record label not wanting him to record a gospel song. And he simply told him, he said, but I did record a gospel song. And it just so happened to be my biggest hit. I Walk the Line. If we're honest, walking the line with the Lord is not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest thing to do. And in knowing Johnny Cash and the story of his life that he shared before he died, We know and we understand that he struggled with being faithful. He struggled with being faithful in marriage. He struggled in being faithful to God. But that's what God wants, isn't it? God wants us to be as faithful to God as God is as faithful to us. But that ain't always easy not always easy. You see, being faithful is to be fully loyal to a person or to a promise. Johnny Cash says in I Walk the Line, as sure as night is dark and day is light, I keep you on my mind both day and night. And happiness I've known proves that is right because you're mine. I walk the line. I knew a preacher, or a preacher's wife rather, who once said publicly, publicly in a marriage conference or retreat, she said, marriage is the one job I'm thankful to have that at times makes me want to quit. <laughs> but why didn't she? Because she was faithful to her husband not just intimately, but completely. And she believed her husband was as faithful to her. Faithful. 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 That's what we must be in, in all of our relationships. Marriage with our siblings, between a coach and a player, business partnerships, between a teacher and student, between a minister and member, parent and child. This song of Johnny Cash is, is about faithfulness and fidelity. But the act of faithfulness should also provide a sense of faith and comfort in the one you're being faithful to. In other words, my being faithful to you should cause you to be faithful to me. 
My being faithful to you should enable you to trust me. Trust me more. My faithfulness should be able to withstand life's difficult moments. You've heard it said before, we are to be faithful in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we live. So why do we struggle so much? Hmm? Why do we struggle so much? It was on Mount Sinai that Moses heard from God and received the Ten Commandments. And these commandments, my friends, were designed to show the children of Israel how to live in community with each other as well as with God. Now, there were some things that they needed to know about God in order to make this work. One, of course, is that God is jealous. Jealous. And does not want what should be given to God to be given to someone else or to something else. And this includes our worship, our tithes, our offerings, our love, our respect, and our commitments. And when we don't give these to the Lord then we're being unfaithful. We're being unfaithful to God. And more times than we want to admit, we are unfaithful to God because being faithful to God is just so doggone challenging. It's hard. It's hard to do this. King David said, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Faithfulness is a struggle, mainly because selfishness is always present. One of the first words that children learn is mine. Mine. And I don't know of a parent who has ever taught a child to say that word. <laughs> I mean, we try to teach them to say daddy and mommy and mine. <laughs> but they get it from somewhere. Mine. You never have to worry. A child learns the word mine. And yet I have not heard a child's, one of the child's first words being Share. Share. You see, we have to teach children to share. And many of us, we grow into adults who struggle with sharing. Adults who still scream, mine. So we can be faithful to our commitments until our commitments come in direct opposition to something we want. Something we hope for on our own merit. I heard a person once say that being faithful wasn't natural. It's not natural, parent, to be faithful. So we need someone supernatural to help us do it to help us remain faithful. And here's the truth. The Lord has to step in, y'all, to keep us walking the line. Oh, hello, somebody. It's got to be the Lord. Oh, I know, I know, I know. You love your spouse. I know you do. Your spouse is amazing. But that's not enough. You love your children. I get it. Your children are incredible. They can do outstanding things, but that's not enough. It's not enough. It's going to take someone else stepping in because on those days when your spouse is less than amazing, 
<laughs> on those days when your kids are less than incredible. It's going to take somebody else stepping in to keep us walking the line. And let me tell you, the Lord can do this. And the Lord is the one who does this. You see, for whereas being faithful may be a challenge for us at times, it's never a struggle for the Almighty. You want to know why? I'm so glad you asked. You see, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, this is what we have here. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. You see... So even when I'm not faithful to the Lord, God is still faithful to me because God can't help but to be anything other than what God is. And that's faithful. Faithful. You see, God always walks the line. Not because God has to be concerned about straying, no. But because God can't help it. God can't help but to be faithful. So God blesses us when we tweet bad and crazy stuff. God loves us when we declare our hate for other folks. God protects us when we do things that ought to kill us. God does this so that we can be just as faithful to God and to each other. <laughs> it's almost as if every day God looks, as a, looks at us and says, I made you. So you're mine. And I'm God. And I always walk the line. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen.